Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at the solutions of Brocard's problem. We have x factorial plus 1 equals y squared, where x and y are positive integers. We're also going to consider some cases where one of the numbers, at least, is not a positive integer. We'll also check those out. So I'll be making some attempts at the solution. I just want to share with you what I tried. And then we'll talk about some generalizations and you know so on and so forth. So first thing that I attempted when I saw this problem was basically I noticed that if I subtract one, if I put the one on the right hand side, I'm getting a difference of two squares, which might be helpful in some cases. Y squared minus one is called a difference of two squares and it's factorable. So I went ahead and factored it into y plus one and y minus one. So it's kind of like we write a factorial as the product of two consecutive even numbers or odd numbers. They're not consecutive integers because they differ by two. And if y is even, y plus one is odd, so on and so forth. So one of the things that I looked at first is this one. Can we come up with some generalization? And in some cases, by the way, this is a Diophantine equation, which means an equation with integer solutions, mainly positive integers. And uh, these equations are fairly interesting. And this one particularly is a hard one because of the factorial. If we had all squares or all, all cubes or a mixture, uh, it could be a little easier because we could look at the modular arithmetic, right? That would be super helpful. Uh, in this case, um, it's a little harder. Uh, and these equations are pretty interesting and they have a lot of applications. And one of the things you can do is either show that if there are or whether there are infinitely many solutions, or you can also sometimes prove that there are no solutions besides the one you found. I mean, if there are any, there are no solutions at all, that would not be very interesting, even though we sometimes see those kinds of problems. Anyways, so this doesn't seem to help. So I'm going to give up on this and just kind of use some numerical values. One of the things you can do is if you can't solve a problem, try to guess some solutions, try to look at a pattern, see if you can get something from that. And you never know when a solution is going to emerge. So I'm going to give you a little bit of history on this problem because it's a very famous problem, a well-known problem. Anyways, so let's go ahead and start by plugging in some values. What also makes this problem difficult uh, on top of everything is basically we have two different variables and a single equation, which is again a common characteristic of Diophantine equations. So if x is 0, for example, I'm going to go ahead and put the 1 back because now I want to do, what I want to do is basically try to get perfect squares by adding 1 to any factorial. For example, if x is 0, I'll be getting 1 plus 1, which is 2, but that's not the perfect square. What about 1? Same thing, right? It's not going to work. So I'll just put an x, which means it doesn't work. If you try 2, 2 factorial plus 1 is going to be 2 plus 1, which is 3. That's not a perfect square. Too bad. We don't have luck. 3 factorial plus 1 is 6 plus 1, which is 7. Uh-oh, that's not going to work either. So you might be thinking, maybe there are no solutions to this equation because we didn't get anything so far. But don't give up. Don't lose courage. What happens if x is equal to 4? 4 factorial is 24, 24 plus 1 is 25, and yes, we have a solution, because 25 is a perfect square, and that's just perfect, isn't it? So from here, we basically get y equals 5, and of course, x equals 4, because that's what we started with. So 4 comma 5 is a solution, in other words, so at least we have one solution, which is good, right? The solution set is not empty set. Let's continue, hoping that we'll catch more solutions or more fish. 5 factorial plus 1. Uh-oh. 5 factorial is 120. Plus 1 is 121. That also happens to be a perfect square. Nice. So from here, we get y equals 11 and then x equals 5. That means 5 comma 11 is another solution. Wow, this was easy, right? Not really. Because when you hit 6, you're going to realize we don't have any solutions because 721, as far as I know, is not the square of an integer. Okay, so no solutions here. We kind of got stuck. We got the 4 and the 5 for x. What about the next one? Again, never give up. Continue to work. 7 factorial plus 1. 
is 5041 and that just happens to be 71 squared. Isn't that just amazing? Sometimes, I mean, life is full of surprises, but math is full of just amazing surprises. Anyways, y equals 71 is another solution. And of course, that comes from 7, x equals 7, which means 7 comma 71 is another solution. So far, so good. We found three solutions, right? Well, are those the only solutions or are there any other ones? That's what we're going to talk about. But I also tried another thing. Let me share with you. And then I'll kind of get into a little bit of history. Not too much. Don't be scared. Just uh, I'll mention a couple things. So first of all, I want you to notice that y is odd. And if you look at all these y values, you're going to realize, okay, all these y values are odd. I mean, I'm not just saying based on those. y is odd because x factorial is even if x is greater than or equal to 2. And in this case, x equals 0 or 1 or 2 did not work. So I can safely say that x must be greater than or equal to 2. I can even say that x is greater than 2, but that doesn't really matter. So x factorial is even. If you add 1 to it, you're going to get an odd number. y squared is odd, which means y is an odd number. So if you find more solutions, it has to be an odd number. But are there any other solutions? That is the million dollar question. So let me show you what I tried. So after figuring out why is odd, that's a kind of like a nice discovery on my part. But anyways, I realized that I can replace, since y is odd, I can replace y with 2z plus 1. 2z or not 2z? Do you see what I see? Now, this is cool because uh, that allows you to uh, cancel out the 1. Notice that. So I'm going to go ahead and replace y with this, if you square both sides, I mean the right hand side, you get 4z squared plus 4z plus 1. And then 1 cancels out, leaving us with something like this. So the question is then, can we get factorials of this type? Again, x equals 5 is going to work because this can be written as 4z times z plus 1. By the way, uh, there seems to be a a relationship between these and triangular numbers because if you divide both sides by 8 you get 8 x factorial divided by 8 equals z times z plus 1 divided by 2 and these numbers are known as triangular numbers because they basically make a triangular pattern like this okay cool cool so a lot of connections but let me tell you that this problem which is called Broca's problem Erdos I, Erdos, a Hungarian mathematician, and actually he is considered one of the greatest mathematicians, maybe the greatest of the 19th century. He conjectured that there are only three such pairs. So these are the only ones that were found, and he conjectured that there are no more solutions, which is an interesting uh, conjecture because obviously you can't just say, oh, okay, I conjectured there are no more solutions. You kind of have to have a solid, solid foundation. But it's not a proof by any means. But by the way, these are called Brown numbers. The solutions as pairs are called Brown numbers. You see a lot of interesting facts about these numbers. Computationally, there were no solutions found up to one quadrillion. What is quadrillion? Think about it. You have the million and the billion and the trillion, and then you have the quadrillion. Is it 10 to the power 15 or is it 10 to the 18? Something like that. Anyways, there's also another conjecture that implies something similar to this, which is called the ABC conjecture. And ABC conjecture actually implies that n factorial plus a equals k squared has only finitely many solutions for any given integer a. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. By the way, I was going to show you the results from Wolfram Alpha. Uh, I forgot to include them, but you can check it out in Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha will show you the exact same solutions. One thing that we didn't talk about, I just realized that y can also be negative because if y is a solution, negative y is also a solution. And until next time, bye-bye.